In this video, I really want to talk about pre-authorizations for a minute. I feel like this is a very important topic to hit because over my years of training sessions, when I go into an office, one thing I see is that they're not getting patients scheduled in for treatment until after they've received an approval from a pre-authorization. So they're going through, and this is because they're afraid of the insurance companies. They don't know how to calculate the estimates correctly. They don't know what the insurance companies need from them. They most importantly don't know their laws, their rights that they have with the insurance companies. So they're just guessing, sending everything out to the insurance going, can you please cover this for us? We don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> this is a huge problem as you can see and will way slow down the process of being able to get patients in and get their treatment taken care of, which should be our main priority. So first off, what is a pre-auth? A pre-auth is a pre-authorization. It's a claim that you have not done services for yet. You'll send it to the insurance company and ask them to approve it prior to doing it. And they'll send you back a letter saying yes or no. Why is it a bad idea to send pre-auths for all uh, treatment plans? So a few reasons. One being is that the insurance will pay the old fees. So if you do a pre-auth for 2020 and then you don't do the treatment till 2021 and in 2021 you got a fee increase but they're going to pay you off of the 2020 fees. So you're actually losing money that way. Secondly, when you send a pre-auth it's very similar to sending a claim. So if they are going to deny it just like they would have if you sent the claim, they're gonna also deny it as a pre-auth and you have to send the additional documentation. You might argue with them for two or three months before you ever get the approval to even get the patient's work started. So this patient's not getting treatment done, you haven't collected even half of the patient's money yet, so you're doing all this work and spending all this time for treatment you haven't even gotten. And I have seen a few times, by the time they call the patient and say, okay, it's been three months, we got approval, we can do this treatment now. And they're like, oh, well, I've gone somewhere else already. <laughs> so you spent all that time and money and you lost the patient and you lost, uh, you did that for nothing. Thirdly, uh, you're training your patients to only get services that the insurance company approves. So if the insurance company says, no, we think you should only get a silver filling. Would you provide a silver filling? No, you wouldn't. You would say, silver fillings are not good for your mouth. We've learned that they break down. You need a white filling. So why are we telling the patients, like, well, we'll go find out what your insurance covers and what your insurance pays for, and then we'll do treatment based off that. You wouldn't. You would say, this is what is healthy for your mouth. This is what is the best treatment for your mouth and we'll send it to your insurance and we'll do everything we can to get them to cover it, but we're not really worried about what the insurance covers. We're worried about taking care of what's right for your mouth. That's a whole different mind frame. You really don't wanna train patients to just do what insurance covers, because uh, insurance is not in the business of dentistry and making sure patients' mouths are healthy. They're in the business of making money. <laughs> um, lastly, an insurance company does not even have to honor the pre-auth. So you fight for three months to get this pre-authorization approved and then you do the treatment but then they come back and they say we've changed our mind we actually are not going to cover these services. And again if you wanted to argue that then you'd have to go through that whole process of arguing it. When you get a pre-authorization it'll say right on the letter that they send you that they don't have to honor it. It's not a guarantee of services it's an idea of what they may or may not cover. So again, I beg to ask the question, why are we going through all of this hassle to get a piece of paper that makes everybody feel safe and when in reality, they still don't even have to honor that? So I don't recommend sending pre-offs on a regular basis, but there is a time and a place to send a pre-off. So when is that time? That time to send a pre-off is when you are doing cosmetic treatment, um, like if you're doing crowns on the front teeth to improve the smile, and maybe some of them are cosmetic, and maybe some of them actually are due to decay or fractures or whatever, and you're not sure if you can get insurance to cover two or three of them or none of them. 
So that would be a good example of sending that out to the insurance company to get an idea if they're going to cover any of those. So very large uh, treatment plans, I think, is a good time to get a pre-op. Even if they do come back, like I mentioned, they will often come back and deny that pre-op, um, even after they had approved it. You can argue it, and it is easier to win the argument since you did get a pre-auth from them. So it is doable, but I just don't want anybody making a habit of using and relying on these pre-auths. Only use it for large treatment plan cases. So in closing, if the service is a covered service, then there's no reason that the insurance won't pay. And your job as the insurance coordinator will be to enforce the laws with the insurance company and making them pay according to the law. So again, this training course is going to equip you with the basic knowledge to achieve all of this that we've been talking about. And so therefore, it's very rarely that you would ever need to send a pre-auth.